this OJ is giving me life and that dog isn't. What's up? It's your girl Jackie G and Alexandrea. In today's video, I'm excited to show you around Alexandria's room and take you through the step-by-step -step process of what I did to declutter and organize her environment in order to help her with her cortical vision impairment and then hopefully give you some ideas of what you can do to organize your child's room because I know a child's room can be overwhelming with the toys, the books, and let alone for a child with medical needs. Yeah, you're really complicated, right? Because you're a complicated chick. Once I did this, I found that it not only helped her focus, it actually helped mine as well. It helped me feel less overwhelmed. This can also be helpful for mommies or even children without CBI. Once again, if you guys don't know, we do a lot of lifestyle and motherhood videos here. Subscribe if you haven't already, join the familia, and let's get into it. So we are recording this in between therapies because hashtag mom life, hashtag YouTube hustle. We're going to get into this at the same time. We're going to get ready for therapy because her first therapy is coming up. You ready? I think she's ready. so struggling with the gay trainer anyway let's talk about medical equipment one suggestion i have for you guys is to try to minimize at the amount of equipment and supplies in your child's room they don't have to be all out in the open because that that's what i did in the beginning of coming into this special life journey i did have everything organized here in her room but i had everything and i mean all of what i got in the shipment with good reason i guess we did spend eight months in the nicu coming out of it of course, it's it can be a scary thing to all of a sudden be thrown into this life of caring for a child with profound need. So I totally get it. I've been there. I've done that for you guys who are coming into this as a new parent of a special needs child because I wish that somebody would have told me in the beginning it is not necessary for your child's room to look like a hospital. Finally, when I said enough was enough, went ahead and did like a whole declutter of her medical supplies and equipment. If you guys want to go ahead and watch it, I have an in-depth video of that. I will link it down below. I keep only the day-to-day -day or weekly stuff here. The rest of it if it's extra, I used to keep it in a nearby room. Some of it I do have in a nearby closet and a lot of it is in the basement. And I'll show you that in a second. The things that you do keep in a room, try to hide them as best as possible. I do a lot of these decluttering videos and the first decluttering video I think I did of her wardrobe. And I did so well that I was able to free up some space in two of her drawers in her closet drawer. Now I store some of her supplies in those two drawers. Let me show you real quick where I keep her equipment. So it's behind this bed. This is her bookshelf, guys. And what I do, I keep her CPAP, her pull socks, and her sound machine here on this bottom shelf. So you can't really see it from over here. But yeah, we need to keep these here because she does use this every night. She uses these three every night, or she uses these two every night. That one we barely use because we don't really like that. If you guys have any suggestions, let me know for a good sound machine. But anyway, the rest of the things we do keep, again, behind this couch. We have the suction machine, the blood pressure, cough assistant, nebulizer, all of the wires over here. It looks messy, but only if you walk over there. From over here, you can't really see it. The only thing that I'm actually thinking about now... Oi! What's up? You okay? You okay? The only thing that I'm actually thinking about now is how do I hide her syringes? Mind you, I live with my parents and there's just absolutely no space in the kitchen to keep these syringes. Right now I have them sitting right here on this main dresser of hers. Don't be surprised if you don't see them anymore there because I'm always thinking about ways to kind of hide things and organize things. I actually use this top drawer as her medicine drawer so I keep all of Alexandria's medicine, adhesives, toothpaste, and things like that. All of that goes in here which we all we use all of this on a day-to-day -day basis. We kind of have to organize that again. So that is what I do with her medical supplies. Those are the things that I would do if I were just coming into this or if you haven't done so already definitely declutter minimize the amount of supplies and equipment in their room and also try to hide things as best as you can in that way you can actually give your child a more kid friendly vibe which was what my goal was for her room i needed to stop living that whole nicu life so i think i achieved it yeah <laughs> stop what are you laughing at what are you laughing at <laughs> did you hear her She's so cute. She's so funny. About to give Alexandria a water flush. What were you laughing at, Mama? Dame agua. Que tengo calor. Take off shoes. Take off shoes. Yeah. Mommy, help you? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> good job, Alexandria. You did so good. 
and I want it to be in her teepees. All right, so let's get into toys. That's another thing that can really get overwhelming. Sectioning off toys into bins and using the rotating method is definitely a good way to deal with this whole toy mess. Your child's room is your child's room. It's always going to have toys and there's always going to be messes. They're children. That's what they do, but that's okay. There is a way to kind of just minimize that right <laughs> what i did is i sectioned off a bunch of her toys into bins and i just left some of her favorite toys here and then i used the rotating method which is a good way to kind of get them interested in toys again so that you don't have to be spending money all the time and every time i switch the toys out alexandria is so interested in the new toy it's definitely been working for us let me go ahead and show you alexandria's toy area she's so cute <laughs> Uh, I created this space. Well, actually, she got this for her birthday last year, and I just kind of threw in some pillows, some blankets. I also keep my extra blankets here because, you know, that's always been a problem for me, finding a place for these extra blankets. So now I keep them in here, and sometimes when I don't want to look at them, I just kind of cover this like this. Or sometimes when I have some laundry, and I just kind of cover this like this. It's all about hiding things, you know? But yeah, she loves this teepee. She loves this balloon hanging from here. All right, so this is her main toy section. So this basket right here, I just keep some of her favorite toys. We have things that we use in therapy, like a shoe sorter. I just recently did this, and I love that I did this. I used to have bibs in here, but what I did was I took out all the bibs, and I I switched them out for light up toys because we do use a lot of light up toys. A child with CBI is usually attracted to toys that light up or that move a lot and I'm just so happy that I did this. Now when we have therapy, I just have them all at hand. I also have another basket over here with just animal toys. Again, I love this. Alexandria is starting to learn her animals and so I have a bunch of animals in here. I also have her picture cards which are CBI friendly because they have the red and the yellow and the white and I just put them up against a blackboard so yeah um, I can talk about this more if you guys want me to down here is what I'm excited about and I've been excited about this for the longest time because I always had the thought of Alexandria's just rolling over here and just getting her toys on her own and she didn't do it for the longest time but that was my wish finally the other day I caught her doing it it was just the best thing ever I just want her to be able to get her own toys you know even though she has hypotonia even though she can't walk yet but she can definitely roll and she can definitely reach and grab and I'm just excited that she's now able to do that so yeah I have these toys here this one's just filled with like scarves and things like that she loves this turtle she loves her music box right now for therapy we're into pushing buttons so I'm really excited about the shelf that is at eye level for her so that she can grab her own toys And then the last section over here is kind of like the pink section where I keep her piano and her iPad And again, this is the box that has all kinds of little small toys in here Sometimes we use these things for therapy and things like that So I do keep that in here all in one section. So this whole section is her toy area All right, so that is set up ready to go for therapy. Next thing that I wanted to talk about is distracting objects. Anything that you find is taking away from your child's focus, like any objects that are just standing out. If you notice that your child is focusing too much on an object or it's just taking away from their focus, then you might want to reconsider taking it out of their room or, or just maybe just move it somewhere where it's not so much in their face. This used to be my parents' old playroom for my nephews before Ale came here. They had it really nicely set up. They had these nice picture frames but unfortunately we had to take them down just because I noticed that Ale just kept looking at them it was distracting her too much when we were in therapy so that's why I had to take it down again I moved some things around put some things in the corner I hid some things again children with CBI are attracted to light so I do have blackout curtains so that's the way I help that situation just think about minimizing those distracting objects you don't have therapy today I did not know that mm, okay so Alexandria's therapist just canceled on us so I have her in here for no reason. Alright, so let's get into color now that we have this whole situation set up because color is definitely a way to reduce the visual complexity of a child's room. So I know there's a lot of research and articles saying that black is a good way to deal with reducing noise and also creating like a focus area. When presenting an object against a black background, it gives it a high contrast, especially if you use colors like red, white, or yellow. So if you guys can see, if you use the red against the black, the red really pops against the black. This is actually for my laptop and I just gave it to Ale 
this because it's black. What is it from? Where is it from? Lap gear. If I can find it, I will link it down below. Our adaptive chair did come with an actual tray, but I just switched that out for this instead, especially when we're working, not when we're, she's like feeding or anything. I use the tray. I use this blackboard also, this trifold blackboard, which I got at Michael's so that it can reduce the distractions that are going on in the background. So if you can, create that little space for them with the black, uh, either if you wanna create a little space in the corner and paint the walls black and just like a little small section in black, or you can use black fabric, or you can use a board like this to create that space. I also just found this just laying around around the, I don't know whose this was, but I took it just because it's a dark gray black round, blah, black round. It's a dark gray blanket. Now I use this to create a little play space for her. Any black or dark blanket will work or a black carpet. Either create a little space for them so that they can focus in because I do not think that you have to go and paint your child's room all in black. Like I think that would be too depressing. I mostly have her room in white. I use really quiet colors like white and light pink and light gray. That's all I use. I don't even have bold patterns or anything like that. I just, everything is just pretty much kind of neutral and then i'm gonna show you the only thing that i do have that is kind of crazy is these two frames right here and i don't want to take these two frames down only because these are a sentimental piece in alexandria's room when alexandria was in the nicu my nephew he was about four or five he told his classmates about alexandria and how she was in the nicu and she was sick and they made these two pieces for us it was just such a happy moment and alexandria loves them sometimes i find her even just looking at them and just cracking up it's so funny it's so cute and i also reorganized her book area here i'm not sure how i feel about it so what i did was i actually turned some of the books around whatever is in her eye level the ones that are up here i did turn them around but they still have color to them so I just kind of kept them up there and anything that else that had a lot more like color in them I just kept all of that up in that area and then I just kind of kept it really plain on this area where it's actually eye level to her I honestly don't know how I feel about this I actually tried it different ways I'll probably put a clip in here to show you the before the after and the after after you guys can tell me what you think i'm gonna just leave it like this for now and see how i feel about it i don't know i might change it i'm constantly changing things don't be surprised Okay guys, at the end of the day, the most important thing to consider is to provide visual access to a child with CVI, not just when they're learning, but also throughout their day. Wherever they're spending the most time, try to minimize the distractions so that they are able to focus. I know that it can be really complex and as I am learning more about Alexandria's CVI and how it affects her and just doing more research, I wanna be able to share more with you guys. So if you guys find this helpful and you want me to do more CVI related videos, then leave me a comment down below and like this video. Thank you so much for watching. Watching, guys we'll talk to you on the next one bye